Good morning, folks, or at least morning here in Indiana. Uh, today I'm going to talk very briefly about Chapter 26. It's called Regulation, oops, I'm sorry, Nutrition and Metabolism. Because this is so heavily dependent on chemistry, um, I really can't do very much lecturing about it. I want you to print out the figures and tables that I have uh, furnished you in a list. And I want you to go over those very carefully. I want you to use them as you go through the chapter. Um, let me just skim through the outline. Section 26.1 is just called nutrition. This is a very general uh, scan of all of the different molecules that we take into our body as food um, and how they are used. 26.2 very specifically is about carbohydrate metabolism. Carbohydrates are the major source of energy and all nutrients uh, in the body, especially the molecule named glucose. Uh, it is very, very important, uh, and I want you to know how glucose is used as a source of energy the energy that is required everywhere else in the body. Uh, section 26.3 is called lipid and protein metabolism. Um, this only covers two pages. It's very uh, short. I want you to look at it, look at the figures there, and uh, see how lipids and proteins are used in addition to the carbohydrates, of course. 26.4 is titled Metabolic States and Metabolic Rates. The term metabolism refers to all of the uh, chemical processes that take place in the cells of our body. Um, so it is important that you understand how all of these uh, processes work together. Finally, section 26.5, your author threw in here, uh, body heat and thermoregulation. Uh, you all know by now that this condition we call homeostasis, how very, very important it is. Uh, and maintenance of the core body temperature is uh, another one of the many states that must be maintained uh, very, very closely to normal. And section 26.5 uh, talks about how that is done. Okay, section 26.1, nutrition starts out with talking about body weight, normal body weights, and energy balance. The next section talks about appetite, how appetite is very important. If you do not have an appetite, uh, as happens in many chronic illnesses, uh, especially with cancer, it is very, very difficult to maintain proper states of nutrition. Um, then the author writes just a little bit about calories. Uh, the, the definition I want you to know, one small c calorie is the amount of heat that will raise the temperature of one gram of water one degree uh, c uh, Celsius. 1,000 small C calories is called uh, a large C calorie, and it is basically the same as uh, a kilocalorie in small letters. Each of us has a maintenance calorie level that we should uh, reach every day. 
And the basic laws of chemistry are that if you take in more calories than you need, it will go to storage. If you take in fewer calories than you need, uh, the body will start breaking down other products in order to uh, make up for that deficit. He then goes on to discuss uh, several pages of carbohydrates and then fiber and lipids and then proteins. Um, I want you to know the very basics about those. Again, know that you cannot memorize everything that there is to know uh, in this one short chapter. Something that is very interesting is on figure 26.2, uh, where it talks about lipo or lipoproteins. These are thing, these are uh, lipid levels that are measured and are very, very important in preventing uh, heart disease and other vascular disease. The difference between very low density lipoproteins, LDL, which stands for low density lipoproteins, and HDL, which are high density lipoproteins. He then goes on to discuss uh, nitrogen balance, minerals, and vitamins. There are two good tables on page 1004 and 1005 uh, that talk about first mineral requirements and the dietary sources of minerals, and then vitamin requirements and some dietary sources of these vitamins. Section 26.2 is titled Carbohydrate Metabolism. Um, remember that this is probably the most important uh, dietary source of energy to our bodies. To quote your author, most dietary carbohydrate is burned as fuel within a few hours of, of absorption. The primary monosaccharide that is used for fuel is glucose, of course. There are three different major pathways that glucose is used in order to make energy. Those are discussed in glucose catabolism and then further on into your reading. One is glycolysis in which glucose molecule is split into two molecules of pyruvic acid. Then anaerobic fermentation, which further reduces the pyruvic acid molecules into lactic acid without needing any oxygen. And then the better way of using the pyruvic acid is aerobic respiration that does require oxygen and oxidizes pyruvic acid down to carbohydrate, carbon dioxide and water. If you will look at figure 26.3, you will see at the very top, about the top three-fourths is called glycolysis and you will see ADP being converted into ATP. Remember that ATP is our primary, primary source of energy in every cell in the body. And then at the very bottom, it shows that part of the pyruvic acid goes into anaerobic fermentation and part into aerobic respiration. Your primary emphasis should be on aerobic respiration. That is shown in and described in detail, pages 1008 and 1009. Uh, figure 26.4 is a very complicated uh, diagram that I had to memorize for medical school. Uh, 
um, you will not need to memorize this and tell every single step and draw every single molecule in the cycle. Uh, but I do want you to know that again, this is how uh, this is how glucose is metabolized and it changed into more uh, ATP. Okay. There's an overview in, on page 1011 that shows for each glucose molecule, and you know, you should know, that there are thousands and thousands of them taken in every day. For each molecule, there are 32 ATP molecules uh, synthesized. Remember that one glucose gives 32 ATP molecules. And you will see how that is done. And, and adding those up equals 32. Glycogen is, is discussed on page 1012. Uh, glycogen is a way that the body uses to store extra glucose. It is stored primarily in the liver, uh, as well as some in muscle. If our diet is lacking in some um, amount of calories, then uh, glycogen can be metabolized in order to give us uh, more energy, more glucose molecules. Figure 26.3, or I'm sorry, Section 26.3 discusses lipid and protein metabolism. Uh, I want you to know the very basic steps that take place there. Lipolysis is uh, shown in section or figure 26.9. And this is how glucose uh, can be used um, in order to form more lipids, that that, that set of uh, reactions is called lipogenesis. Proteins are also discussed. Section 26.4 describes metabolic states and the metabolic rate. Again, it's too co complex for me to just lecture about. You will have to read this, uh, use the figures that hopefully you print out, use a yellow highlighter or pink if you'd rather or some other color. I just think that yellow was uh, made for highlighting in textbooks. I could not possibly use any other color. And then finally, 26.5, uh, talks about the maintenance of body heat, body temperature, how heat can be produced if we are cold, and how heat is lost from the body uh, if we are too cold, or if, if the environment is too cold. Okay, that is in a very quick scan of chapter 20. Six, thank you for your attention.